And here is the Writer's Almanac for Sunday. It's the 26th of December, 2021. It's the first day of Kwanzaa, an African-American and Pan-African cultural holiday that was first celebrated in 1966. The name comes from a Swahili phrase meaning first fruits, a cultural holiday rather than religious so that people of all faiths can come together and celebrate. It's the birthday of the columnist Doris Lilly, born South Pasadena, California in 1926, wrote society columns for the New York Post and the New York Daily Mirror, admitted that the people she wrote about were shallow, but she said they're pleasant and they smell good and they eat well and drink good wines and that's all right. She was the author of the book How to Marry a Millionaire, made into a movie starring Marilyn Monroe. And she was one of the women who inspired Truman Capote's character Holly Golightly in Breakfast at Tiffany's. And she also dated Ronald Reagan for three years in between his marriages to Jane Wyman and Nancy Davis. It's the birthday of the poet Thomas Gray, born London, 1716, who gave us the phrase, where ignorance is bliss, tis folly to be wise, and also gave us the poem that begins, the curfew tolls the knell of parting day, the lowing herd winds slowly o'er the lee, the plowman homeward plods his weary way, and leaves the world to darkness and to me, elegy written in a country churchyard. It's the birthday of Henry Miller, New York City, 1891, worked in his father's tailor shop, then ran a speakeasy in Greenwich Village, and eventually moved to France, lived there for nine years. And while he was there, he wrote Tropic of Cancer, which was immediately banned in the U.S. when it came out in 1934, banned for its graphic sexual content. Thirty years later, the Supreme Court ruled that it could not be suppressed. He had already sold two million copies at that point. It's the birthday of David Sedaris, born Binghamton, New York, 1956, grew up in the suburbs of Raleigh, North Carolina, in a family of eight, suffered from an obsessive compulsive disorder, juvenile Tourette syndrome, and a lisp. Landed in Chicago in the mid-80s, where he was discovered in a comedy club by Ira Glass, who put him on the radio, and where Sedaris's stories became very popular, led to national exposure. His book, The Santa Land Diaries, was popular, and his collection, Naked, in 1997, in which he wrote about coming out as a gay man. David Sedaris, who divides his time between France and London, doesn't drive, has no cell phone, doesn't do email, and does all of his writing at a typewriter. Here's a poem for today by Ron Paget, How to Become a Tree in Sweden. I look up ahead and see the trees of Sweden waving at me. Gently they wave their bending heads. The light goes dim above the land, and down below the lights come on, and Swedish people one by one come out to shop and say hello as crisply as a Swedish cracker that fresh out of the package goes snap, and soon the air is full of snaps and schnapps and weimaraners, and me, my various selves, united for a moment, Swedish, a tree, myself, waving and lost among the others. How to Become a Tree in Sweden by Ron Paget from You Never Know, published by Coffee House Press and used by permission here on the Writer's Almanac. Be well, do good work, and keep in touch.